Hey guys, I'm Tim. I'm Bob. And I'm Spencer. And this is the Board Game Rundown, and today we're going to review the Texas Chainsaw Massacre from Trick or Treat Studios. This plays one to four players in about an hour. That's definitely Pretty accurate. accurate. Yeah, um, it, could, it could be less even. It can <laughs> be, it yeah, can be yeah. less. <laughs> and probably really not much longer than that because of just the way this yeah. game plays. Right. Uh, so this game combines like some really interesting mechanics because mm -hmm. there's bag building in it, right? Mm -hmm. And, and uh, as you're trying to go through. And uh, so what's going to happen is you've got this hideous bag here made of human flesh. Well, it's made of flesh. It is. Maybe. Mm -hmm. uh, but what, what's going to happen is on your turn, you basically, you get two free move actions if you're uninjured to start, which to start the game, you should be uninjured. Yeah. And then um, you're going to, you're going to move and then you can choose to then draw. Well, no, you have to draw at least, at least one, one, but you're going to draw from the bag and you can go kind of as long as you want. Push your luck. And so depending on what you draw, like this is a slaughter family token. So that's going to populate the board. If we get uh, the grandpa track full, then the grandpa's going to appear in the dining room. And then now anytime we walk into the dining room, we're going to take damage. We could draw an action token. That's going to let you do one of these things. It's going to let you either move another space, push an adjacent character one space, uh, search. So if you're in a named space, so a space with like white lettering in the red, you know, like the blood around it, uh, that will let you draw a search card. And, or you could pick up an item either on your space or an adjacent space. And that'll really come into play when it, when it comes to the objects we are looking for. So depending on player count, we're trying to get either gasoline, X amount of gasoline, and then there's one set of keys. So Spencer and I, I think just came to the same realization. I didn't have to push Spencer into the road to pick the keys up. You could just pick the keys up space. in adjacent space. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> but it was way more fun watching Spencer trying yes. to get back across the road before the semi hit him. Yeah, we'll get there. <laughs> we'll get there. funny. <laughs> um, another, another thing you can draw is the, uh, the photograph. That will let you peek at the top card of the search deck and then you can put that card back on top or on the bottom because they're Any, not all good yeah and anytime you look at a search card or a search card is revealed uh there's a little truck icon that's going to move the truck if we get hit by the truck we take a blood splatter token if the hitchhiker gets hit by the truck or actually anybody other than leatherface gets hit by the truck they uh get killed yeah uh, leatherface goes back to the killing room and uh, and dies or not dies kind but respawns. respawns there yeah not dies I said dies because I saw Big Ed sitting there on the hook mm -hmm. um, sorry Ed yeah so we're gonna go through and there's different rules for drawing so like most of the time if you draw three of one thing something bad happens or right. it ends, or it ends your turn, turn. Yeah. Um, if you draw three Leatherface tokens so every time you draw a Leatherface token he is gonna move depending on the the uh, furthest left space, revealed space on, on his track, right? So he starts off with one move. So every time you reveal a leather space token, he's going to move leather face token. One time he's going to move one space closer, closer to you, to the closest, closest player. person. It, there are doors and windows uh, on the board here. Leatherface automatically breaks through the doors. And if he does that, they put a little blood splatter, like it flips it over. And now if you move through that area, you get hurt. Um, Shrapnel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cause normally like you could walk through slowly, right? So you stop there mm -hmm. and then your next turn, you move there, or I could jump through the window, breaking it and giving me a blood splatter token, which might be fine if you're in a hurry. Yeah. Um, blood splatter is better than being on a hook. It yeah. is. <laughs> if Leatherface hits you and you don't have three blood splatter tokens, you will run away the number of spaces you have blood splatter tokens. So two, one or two, right? right? Or if he no, gives you your third, you right. can run three, three spaces. spaces. Yeah. Yes. But if he hits you and you, and you already have that third or more blood splatter, you automatically go onto a meat hook. So if you have gas or keys, you drop all those items on the space he hits you. You go to the meat hook. Three players on the meat hook, dead, ends the game. Game over, man. Um, there is the eyeball token uh, that you might draw out of the bag. And if you draw that, that's going to let you flip over one other token. Because this whole board, there's all these circles. These are, That's all going to be seated with these tokens yep. from this bag. Yeah, face down, so you don't face know who they are. Face down, so you don't know. And so there could be like, oh, we, like we had one game we were playing, and we were trying to find the keys. And Spencer just was like, oh, I don't know this one. And flipped it over and 
it was there the keys. There were the keys <laughs> right there. <laughs> Got lucky. So yeah. we made a beeline right over there. But it, it's also useful because it's like, oh, do I really want to? Do I need right. to go in that room? Do I, you know, like, it's really tough. So uh, it, it it's it's really handy. It's yeah. really handy. If you draw three bones, it just ends your turn. So, but one of the cool things this game does is when you move across these, you reveal them, but they don't, you don't do what they say. They go on your little barbecue tray right here. Then at the end of your turn, any tokens that you've added to the barbecue tray, just get added to the bag along with the tokens that you drew, mm -hmm. uh, unless it was a uh, slaughter family token. And then you basically, you pass the bag and the tray to the next player. If they don't have three damage on them, they can move. And, uh, yeah, and then they're going to start drawing tokens. Yeah. And so there's this little push your luck, you know, like how long do we go? Um, there are objective cards, which you can hand out to make the game harder. I recommend you do that because we found the game a little easy without them. Yeah. yeah. And then we also played on slaughter mode, which yeah. is if you draw a leather face to token, you have, have to draw, to draw another again one. Yeah. and, uh, or draw again. Right. right. And so that made it really crazy it did, and yeah. it really amped up sort of the intensity yeah. and made this game really fun for me. Uh, but that's basically how the game is played. You just need to have all of the required items back on the van space and the hitchhiker cannot be on the van space right. for you to win the game. But there is like a little grading scale, like, oh, did everybody survive? Uh, you know, How more many people die. More people die than yeah. survive. If you, you know, do get like hooked, do you either try to pull yourself off the hook or you can just let that character die and respawn a new character? Yes. Yeah. But then again, three characters done on the hook, game over. Right. So. so sometimes it might be worth trying to pull yourself off the hook. Right. Yeah. You don't if you're that second one on the hook, you're like, well, I'll try to get off the hook. So in case somebody else dies or gets hooked, you don't end the game. Right. So. Right. But uh, that's more or less how the game is played. It's they've got some fun. Uh, if you die, yeah, what happen. happens? What happened to you, Spencer, when I Big Ed died? Burned in, turned into a bone chair. You oh, got, nice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, like here, your bones have been turned into a wind chime. You got turned into a award-winning chili. That ain't so bad. Oh, mm. Leatherface cut off your face. You've been turned into sausage, and you've been turned into barbecue. So yeah, they're nice, grizzly, uh, and on theme. Yeah. Uh, games or uh, deaths. For your for your uh, for People's, your characters, yeah. I was worried at first that they were going to be like, and everybody now takes a blood splatter. Or oh right, no, thankfully it's just flavor. They're not <laughs> that neat. Yeah, oh, it's, pun intended. Uh, yes, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's great. Okay. Um, so guys, what do you uh, what do you guys think of Texas Chainsaw Massacre? And go like everything, like mechanics, uh, uh, components, everything. Mm -hmm. uh, Bobby, why don't you go first? Uh, yeah. Um, Why well, I like bag building. Uh, this is a fun cooperative bag builder. So does Leatherface. Yeah, yeah, he does. <laughs> this is a very cool looking bag. Like I, I enjoyed the uh, stitches on here. Very Ed Gein. Um, very cool. Uh, I really enjoyed this. Like I, we had a lot of fun. I would definitely recommend playing with the slaughterhouse rules. That way you have to keep pulling tokens if you keep drawing Leatherface. It really kind of amps up the tension like quite mm -hmm. a bit. Um, it's interesting that like once you have those three bladders, uh, blood splatters, then you don't get the two free moves at, during your turn. So you have to keep pulling from the bag to get action tokens to try to move and like drag yourself to safety. Yes. And uh, that just really, you know, adds to it, you know, a lot more. Definitely use the objectives because like we said, you know, running around, grabbing the things and just getting out. It was pretty easy, but like, oh, crap, we needed two people at the diner and two people at the graveyard. So we're having to like run around and avoid all these people and still hit these objectives. And just like it was so much tension and so much fun. Mm -hmm. And then like trying to run people over with a semi. We <laughs> ended up pushing Leatherface into the semi. We did. Yeah, we did. That was great. You know, oh. it, was like, it was a good time. Um, but um, no, like, like the standees are fine. Like, you know, I'm a minis person, but the standees are fine. You know, yeah. there's, there's no no complaint to that. Um but I, I think one of the best things is you're pulling them out and you're like, yeah, oh yeah, we were <laughs> they, making the sound effects and stuff. And we were yeah, getting it was, into it. We it were getting into time, it. So, yeah. uh, Spencer. Oh, well, uh, I did definitely had a, a good time with it. There were, uh, a few things that were a little bit, uh, odd at first. Um, like there was a misspelling. We we're pretty certain it was oh. a misspelling yeah. um, on one of the cards. Oh, there, uh, the yeah. dinner time. Um, dinner time or diner yeah. time. Diner time. Uh, and in the book, there are a few things you're kind of looking around trying to see if it's in there. One of the things, we're not certain if it was correct, but we play with it the way that it is written in the rules. Right. Oh, about the tokens about being the, flipped these over? tokens. So mm -hmm. uh, in the rules, it uh, yeah. says that these, if once you get three of the families on the board and they're going to be face down, that every time you pull one, it ends your turn. Mm -hmm. um, but... It, 
we have this handy dandy little player guide, aid, yeah. I love the little player aid, but it's missing some information. Like all of the others tell you that that ends your turn if you draw three of them in a row, or if you, have, if you draw three of them, you end your turn. Right. Um, which is also weirded. It's, it's worded very strangely. Yeah, it's worded Once you read it in the book, it makes a lot more sense, but on the player aid, it's worded oddly. Uh, but yeah. yeah, just make sure you, you know what you're doing But it there. doesn't mention that for the family token. Right, that if there's three of them oh. on the board, that it's going to end your turn yeah. automatically. And so we're like, yeah. did, was it supposed to be that these are face up when you pl- first put them on and yeah. then go face down? I don't down? know I don't, that don't that matters. Don't know. Yeah. I mean, I don't it, know it was that fine that the way we played it. Yeah, I think, I think it worked the way, um, fine the way we played it. And the it. only yeah. thing that really mattered was that we knew we needed to know that it ended your turn after grandpa and one of the ho- one of the, one the is ones. on the cook, so yeah. that's three of those. Once they are on the board, drawing anytime you draw a slaughter family token immediately ends your turn. And so I think, cognitively for me, it's it's kind of like if there's three of any of the tokens that come out, mm-hmm. you're you're done. So to me, that just means that those are kind of perpetually they're in, always they're out. always out, right? Correct. So when you draw another one, right, you've. Yeah. Clip yeah. that mark, right? In your, your I, I see what, what Spencer was saying. He was he was wondering if like you know you leave them face up during your turn, and once your turn's over, you flip them over. So that way, if you draw three in one turn, like you do the bones, how that would end your turn. Yeah, but yeah, but so, either way, it ends your turn. Correct. Yes. Either way, it, it ends your turn. Yeah, and uh, we also had um, well, we had the objective where we had to get all of the, all the characters out. out. And that was so much harder than it the was, other ones. Yeah, because then you have to almost get all the tokens, and you have to pull them out of the back. So you're constantly pushing your luck when you mm-hmm. really don't want to push your luck. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, Lots the, of tension. Yeah, the first time we played, we it was actually pretty easy. Yeah. We went through. We, had, um, we used one uh, of the... Uh, Objectives each. Yep. Oh my god. Um, and they were pretty easy ones. They're like, oh, go yeah, to this location, easy. or go to this location with another person. I get this it token. Was, yeah. Yeah. But uh, um, the one that you had at the second time that we one played was, much harder. was the tough one. Yeah. And then we also the slaughterhouse mode when we played the second time, um, the slaughter mode made it much better. The way to go. Yeah. And and the way I see this, at first I was thinking that might be a knock against it that you have to ramp it up to make it fun. But I'm like, but it means that if you're terrible at this game you're going to have a good time playing without that extra stuff. If you're really good at this game, everyone gets three. Ramp it up. Yeah. 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 And so you can kind of tailor it to yeah. your experience, your And what your you're ability. looking for. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Do you like super for. tough co-ops? Give yourself everybody two or three objectives. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. That would be and really hard. And some of them hard. are really hard because there's, really hard. there is like draw in one turn, you need to draw a leather face, a bones, an eye, and a photo. Wow. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Makes you push your luck when you don't it want really to. It really does. Yeah. It really does. Yeah. I like it. And um, there were times, because it was too easy when mm. we didn't have to draw another one after we drew a Leatherface, because right. we're like, well, I don't want to, you know, yeah, potentially oh, exactly. do it. So right next stop. to Spencer, I'm just going to stop pulling. Yeah. yeah. So no. having no, no, no. to do no, it, pull again. Pull. that's what <laughs> killed Big Ed, because yeah. we got one, it pulled Had another draw one, another pulled one. another one. Big yeah. Edna. Big Edna. <laughs> yeah. I always going on about Big Edna. Yeah, that's funny. Oh. <laughs> Uh, other than that, I mean, yeah, the, the game was definitely fun. The special moves are, they're unique, but they're not, like, game-changing. Yeah. Um, no, they're different enough, they're different but enough. I think everybody kind of understands them, um, yeah. you know, pretty well. Like, uh, Big Ed could actually move the truck. Right. For an action. Uh, this guy, And we Jerry, saw where that would be very useful. Yeah, yes. you can see where that's useful. <laughs> Each one could be very useful in specific situations. Sure, yeah, yeah. Uh, but then, also, if you don't ever have that thing come up, oh, well. Right. Right. That's the nature of the game. Uh, yeah. But I had a good time. Uh, also, since the search actions, the search cards are not all good. Yeah. And just yeah. looking at them moves the truck. Mm-hmm. Uh, which is sometimes bad. Sometimes, sometimes bad. bad. Yeah. It almost Especially if us. you don't have movement and you're stuck in the middle of the road. Yeah. You're trying to crawl across the road. <laughs> semi's bearing Brrr. down on you. Yeah. yeah. You got a real gauge situation going on there. Uh, but, uh, okay. So guys, if you are fans of Texas Chainsaw Massacre, they, all of the, of the original movie, all the thematic elements are here. They've got all the characters, even big Ed, who is just this random truck, semi truck driver that gets out. I don't even know what happens to him at the end of the movie. Um, and Tim did research. I did. (laughs) I did. Well, I like horror movies a lot. And so like, this is one I haven't seen in a few years. I was like, I mean, you know, I knew it because I've watched it a lot over, you know, 45 years. You know. <laughs> but um, I've seen this movie a lot, but like to go back and like kind of watch it after reading the rules of the game and, and like really like, okay, like how does the theme? Mm-hmm. Cause it's one thing to just put Texas Chainsaw Massacre on the front of the box. Right. And it's like, this is a, but this actually like 
ramps up with the tension. Mm -hmm. There's things you can do that are literally in the movie. And without spoiling really anything, there is a scene where somebody jumps through a window. Like, GTFO, right? Like, out. Yeah. And it was awesome. Uh, and it's like, oh, you could do you that. You can do that. You yeah. could do that if you needed to. Yeah. Uh, there's locations that, that matter. You know, right. there's things on the board that are in the movie. Like little Easter eggs that don't even really matter to gameplay. But... Um, but I just appreciated some of the detail that was put in here uh, that made this game a little a little more thematic. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, we I had a great time playing this. I thought it was really fun. We did we did tweak up the difficulty, but it it's in the rules for that, right? right. We I played it I played it without using the objectives or the um, or the slaughter rule slaughter mode, and I was like, this game's too easy. But then you start doing the objectives and stuff, and it's like, oh, okay. So yeah. when I've taught these guys how to play, it's like, okay, we should at least start with one objective. Right. And we still thought it was like a little easy, and then we were going to do two objectives, but then we saw slaughter mode where we can have to keep drawing. Right. So we did drawing. one objective each and did slaughter mode, and the game was like 10 times yeah. harder yep. right away. Yeah. And, um, and so more fun in my opinion way oh, more fun yeah way more fun <laughs> and cinematic at the very end my character here he had all the blood splatter tokens so he couldn't move on his own i kept having to draw for the action and i got a card that let me use an action and run for it so i'm like just plowing through doors running like crazy and then i run out of actions and then Leatherface leather coming just, up just behind right yeah. up behind <laughs> so cinematic yeah. Yeah. perfect way to die good. yeah they did it just this game really did a good job of recreating because there was there was a time where this game felt very much in control, even on the harder level. And then it just takes like two turns of not the best draws. Mm -hmm. And it's like, oh, uh -oh. no. Yeah. And um, the, the, I haven't seen this happen. The one thing that I guess could happen that would be a real bummer is if you found all of the items you need right here in the very first oh, yeah. couple spaces. The brambles. Oh, yeah, I suppose, but man. The brambles hurt you when you, let, when you stay on them. Unlikely. Uh, very unlikely, but yeah. yes. But it is it possible. It could happen. And my answer would be, if that happens, shuffle them all up and play, play again. again. Uh, yeah. like, because, oh, there was five minutes to play again. Yeah. Because, <laughs> and I was worried when I was like, oh no, you got to put all these tokens out. I was worried this was going to feel very fiddly. Yeah. But setting this game up twice today even, right, right did not feel fiddly at all. Um, I feel like if you had to flip up and down those with the slaughter, like now we're getting into some weird territory where it's like, sure. oh, I have to keep like that. Never. It didn't matter. Yeah. And it, it, it wasn't a ton because like, I, I know what you're talking about. There's some games we like, oh, put all these tokens across the board. And it's just like, oh, my gosh, like yeah. 10 minutes later. Right. But that's not it's not bad at all. It's this, like, what, 20 all. tokens, maybe 30. No, it's not it, that bad. Yeah, it's not that bad. You just spread them like if you put them on and you kind of spread them out, they're already really close to where they're going to go. Yeah. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, but yeah, they do a, they do a really nice job. This game feels very balanced. Mm -hmm. I enjoyed cranking up the difficulty. I would love to try it like on the hardest mode just to see how bad it is. Oh yeah. <laughs> but um, but even just doing it with one objective card in the slaughter mm -hmm. mode, I thought was super fun. Very tense. Like we we all had a really good time. Like there was like as you're drawn out of the bag, you're like you know what's gonna happen. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it literally came down to it kind of felt like the end of the movie because yeah. you got Leatherface in the middle of the road. A couple, couple people on hooks already. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so uh, it felt really good. It was really fun. I had a great time with this. Um, all right, guys. Do we want to rate this game? Spencer. Yeah. How do we rate games here at the Board Game Rundown? Well, each one of us is going to give this a rating from a zero or one to ten. <laughs> uh, we never made it that far, so we've never yeah. tried. But one to ten, and we give point fives. We will then average our ratings up, and that's what our official uh, rating will be. But if you like one of our opinions better than the other ones, eh, check that opinion out. Well done, sir. All right. Well done. Uh, Bobby. Ooh, that's me. What's, uh, what's this uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre mm. for you? Uh, so I think originally I would have started about like an, an eight cause we had fun, but then when we played it again on that slaughter mode, really ramped up the fun for me. Like, Oh, I, cause like you said, if I drew one and it moved in one space closer to Spencer, we would normally just stop like, okay, right. but no, no, he's hot on your trail. I'm drawing another one. Fantastic. That's an eight and a half. For yeah. Me, so, yeah. 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 Uh, Spencer. Uh, I think just cause of coming to some little bit fiddly, fiddly things in the rules uh i'm gonna give it an eight but i definitely had a lot of fun with it it was very somatic 
Yeah, I was um, before like playing it without any of the extra stuff. I was like a seven and a half, mm. but then playing it with multiple players because yeah. I think that makes it harder as well. Sure. And then adding the difficulties, the, the difficulties and yeah. everything. Eight and a half, like hands down, yeah. because how much fun we had and uh, and it's just. There's no going back for me. I guess if I'm teaching like new people and maybe they're a little right. timid I, about it. I would it. leave the objective house, but I would still do, leave do the slaughter, slaughter mode. Yes. I think slaughter just, mode is almost no. a must. Yes, because it, it just really ups that tension, right? You're like, yeah. oh my God, I drew one. Oh my God, I have to draw another one now. And like, yeah, it really ramps that and tension up. And I just appreciated how fast this game plays. And yeah. how fast to teach. It took almost no time to teach. Them. Yeah, it was yeah. super. it's super easy to teach. Yeah. And um, it wasn't hard learning out of the rules, mm -hmm. uh, you know, so those are all great things. Yeah. So what's our average? So we take our scores, we add them together. 8.3. 8.3. That's really Really solid, yeah. really good. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm excited. Uh, so full disclosure, Trick or Treat Studios did give us this copy. I asked them for a, for a copy. They didn't send this unsolicited. I went up to them at Gen Con and was like, please, sir. Uh, <laughs> may I have your, <laughs> may I have your <laughs> extras. Oh. bag? Yeah. Oh, boy. Um, yep, <laughs> but yeah, I was excited about this game. I knew they had this game coming down the, the pipe. Yeah. Anyways, um, I, it was on my radar. Actually, I went over their booth prepared to buy it, like regardless. Like yeah. I was getting this game. Right. Um, and 100% uh, did not disappoint. I, I really, we all really had a good time. With yeah. This. Yep. Um, any final thoughts before we close out? Uh, no, I don't I think, think so. so. All right. So if you found this video useful, please consider uh, looking at our Patreon. If that's something you want to do, if you want to support the show in other ways, uh, other than just liking, subscribing, thumbs up, comments. Mm. Uh, what do you love about this game? What yeah. do you not like about Who's this game? Who's your favorite serial killer? Oh, yeah. Lord. Yeah. <laughs> What's your favorite part in the movie? <laughs> we promise the FBI is not monitoring <laughs> Mr. Serial Killer over here. Um, yeah, let us know what you think uh, and, all, and all kinds of things like that because we want to know. Yeah, and we interact with the comments too, right? We'll, let you, we'll talk with you. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. for sure. And we also do a live stream every Wednesday where you never know who's going to be there and what we're going to talk about yeah. because we might say we're going to talk about one thing and then we don't. Two all. hours later. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> It happens. But uh, for the Board Game Rundown, I've been Tim. Bob. Hello, Clarice. <laughs> we'll see you next time. That's a wrong movie. <laughs> I know. <laughs>